Righto, hello again everybody. Welcome to another episode. Today's challenge, again, is going to be a slightly different one. I'm, I am still working on the S-Corp, I'm just doing potty little jobs which are not worth worth filming, sort of touching up welds here and there, but so I'm sort of getting a bit fed up of doing that if I'm honest. So I want to do something a little bit different again today. So we're going to mess around with that gearbox there, which is the Mark 1 MX-5 gearbox, and see if we can make it fit our SD-170 engine. Now I have I've done this with um, an RX8 box, but never with a, a MX5 Mark One box, and I'm only doing it with this one because I, I have it. So I, I don't have a lot to lose by trying. Uh, so it's always worth a good try. So the idea is to see if start off is probably mix this up into a few different uh, levels. I start off the day with how I make an adapter plate from one to the other, and the importance of starting with one point. All right, our starting point. It's the centre of our crankshaft. The other centre point we need is the centre point of our gearbox because that's the two bits that matter. That bit and that bit need to be perfectly lined up to each other. The rest of it it's matters but not as crucial. And so what we do with that, you'll see I've already wrapped that up with some insulation tape. I tap a socket under there which will be the same outside diameter as that. There, that's bigger there. So I think was that one. Yes, there we go. So oh, gently persuade that under there. And we'll come back to that and explain in a minute why I've done that. So with our bit of card, now I did have a potch about with corrugated card. I've been messing about with this all morning, so, so this is what I've this is what I've learned. <laughs> the first thing I've learned is don't don't bother with corrugated card because it's too much of a hassle to work with. So I've got myself a bit of stiff card. Um, it's about four hundred mil by four hundred mil square. You can get this from a craft shop anywhere. So this is just a sort of a stiffish card. What's that about? One and a half mil thick, I suppose it is. And we'll find a centre point on that, and then what we need is a 32 mil hole in the middle of it, which is the outside diameter of that sticking out at the end of the crank there. All right, so find a basic centre of our bit of card, just like so. Nothing too special about doing this. Uh, our line up through which would be our centre line as well and everything will work off of that so a 32 mil hole in that we use our compass set up and so half of 32 is 16, so we'll get a... Right, the other measurement we want is 150 mil. If I remember rightly. From the back of the fly. Here. That's what you want. Basically that measurement across there, which is 250. So we'll go... We'll go 260 for a bit of leeway. Half of 260 is 130. It'll be a while before we cut in this circle out, but we need it there before we cut this middle one out. And we'll come back for that. Okie dokie, next thing we need a nice sharp blade. Uh, a craft knife would be best for this. I seem to have misplaced mine. I did have one there somewhere, but I've, I've misplaced it. So that's our starting point. We're holding the middle and our centre line. So we know that now fits on there nicely. Now to get our points there, what I've discovered is to get some these grub screws. 
So this is a 10 mil grub screw with an Allen head on it. They got a nice little bit in the end, which marks up the card nicely. I'll put those in there and there. You can tap onto them and get our first holes in. I did try doing this in a more scientific way of working out where things are from the centre of that and the, but this is a much 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 easier way doing it as long as our centre line is lining up yeah happy days look at that look at that punch that lovely little hole that does that we can work with Using a drill bit, we can open that up then. There's my 10mm drill bit gone. I had that just now. I could use my uh, Uzi's, I suppose. We made out even better. But uh, I was using a 10mm drill bit earlier and that was working just fine. So now we can lock that into position. Like so, with a couple of bolts. On the ZTEC engine, there's really only five places you need to worry about getting um, bolts into. Pull this, pull this back out again, I'll show you where those are. Got those two, those two, and one there. From there down, we're using our um, our custom sump anyway so only these holes won't matter <laughs> and I found that those have been plenty I've not had any more issues any issues with uh, gearboxes cracking or falling off or anything so they they provide plenty of support for what we need right so the next two we want to get is these here now that needs opening up a little bit but I worked on my advantage by screwing that in a little bit on the other side we can come through from the back on it. So let's get those tidies into position again. So again, using the some uh, cap head bolt, but you see how, the, how they have uh, got a nice little cutting edge on the on the end of there. Push that through from the back of the block, and that's it. With hammer. On this side, oh, we've got a bit stuck in here, anyway. So, all I did there was using that, pushed it through, and then used it to mark the back there. So, you see the marks on there, so we can now punch those through. Bit of plate to back it up. Lovely. Again, open those out. And I'll one for that side. Lovely. So those those holes in place. And you might be thinking I could just measure those up and do it. Um, more scientifically and you're probably right but that hole relative to that hole is different to that hole relative to that hole and they're both one slightly higher than the other and they're both higher than that so it's just easier to work it out like this so doing that that gives us our bolt holes for the Ford setup so we can put an F against all those hole so we know where we are the other thing you need to keep memory is which side of the card you're working with because on when we're working off the engine this is our face side but when we work off the gearbox that's our face side so you gotta always remember to keep that and not turn it around like that 
Okay, so that, that gets us started. Now we'll go onto the gearbox. Onto the gearbox side of things. So this is where you remember to keep the card in the same orientation. So that's the engine face side. That's the gearbox face side. So and now you'll see why I've got that socket on there because we can now orientate that around that um, central point. And you notice on the top of the gearbox is a there's a casting mark there, which that gives us the centre of our gearbox. There's our centre line brought across. And that, that's just dandy. So I'll get a couple of clamps, clamp that into place, and we'll start marking up the holes. Right, that'll keep that in place to where we want it. Okay, so from this side of the gearbox, we're not we're gonna worry about making the holes, just gonna mark through where the holes are. and draw around the gearbox roughly this will be the outside edge mostly of our plate and that's all we need from there so what we have there now is basically the shapes we're after so we can just sort of Line these up a little bit there and across the bottom there. Bring that around just like that. What we'll do now is stick that back on our Z Tech engine and go around the back of it on the Z Tech. Now we do have a starter motor opportunity here which I don't know if it's going to work or not so that's kind of where I had the starter motor set up before when I messed around with the engine before just to get it running so that might work but it might foul the steering shaft don't know yet we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but it might work for us so it's around the back of the engine now around here just going to do the same thing is draw basically the shapes around the back of the engine I think overly exciting it's just what we don't want to do same with the other side what we don't want to do is cut off more material than we end up than we're going to need because some of it may overlap one side compared to the other so we just what we do then is cut off the the aggregate of the both if that makes sense So on the back, we've got a bit that sticks out there, which we don't want to cut off too much because we need that uh, a good bit of meat around that bolt hole there. And the same there. And they're not a million miles away from each other as it happens. Excellent. Okay, so what we can do is cut that to shape and cut this out the centre now. Lovely, and that gives us our template for our gearbox adapter plate. Super, right, so what I'm going to do next is transfer this onto a bit of my 1.2 mil steel that I've got. I'm not going to use one, obviously not going to use 1.2 mil steel as a as a gearbox adapter because that wouldn't be nearly strong enough. I'm going to be looking um, a piece of steel uh, six mil thick, which would be more than enough for what you want. So let's transfer this across under the steel, and I'll explain why I, I do that then. Got a nice bit of steel here. It's uh, one of the offcuts from when I did the made the sump as it happens. So we'll uh, put our template over that now. Okay, note yourself, don't cut that out. <laughs> we need our centre point there.
Now I can hear some, some of you guys already thinking, well that's not a very accurate way of doing it, but you'll see I have a plan. I'm just going to cut the outer periphery of this off and leave that disc in the middle for now. All will become clear. Now you'll see in a moment as I offer this up to the engine why I've not been too worried about the accuracy of these holes. Uh, you'll see there's a good reason for that. But before you do do that, I need to mark our centre lines. That centre line is crucial. Right, okay, so we've got our plate all cut up, ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is weld some bolts onto where these are. So I wasn't too worried about cutting these super careful and I can even open these up if I need to. So I know, I know what's important is this central hole and that center line to line up there. So if things aren't lining up, we'll drill the holes out bigger until they do. And that one isn't. So let's open those out. And what I'm doing here in principle is the same as what I do what I did with the oil pickup pipe when I welded the two nuts next under the washer. Exactly the same principle. And this is why I've gone on to the little bit of thin sheet first, because this then will be our template for the final piece. Right, so that's the holes all drilled oversized now. Now we can line things up to suit ourselves. Right, we know that those bolts now are bang on where we want them. So I'm going to weld those onto that bit of plate now. And then what we can do later, as I've done before, is drill through, wrench that out, is drill through the bolt. And then we know we are dead on where we want to be. Right, we now know that they are bang on where they need to be. Okay, so that's our bolts drilled into, or welded into there. So what we'll do is just simply drill through those with a 10mm bit, and that'll give us a drill guide for the when we come to make the final plate. So what we want to do now, remember which side is which, is put that under there, find our centre, and then line up exactly the same thing again some bolts to line up with the, with the holes on here. Now these holes are bigger, so I'm going to use some 12 mil for that. So of course what we want to do is, if you can, is have the bolts welded to that face as well, because it makes, so this can sit flat. So this is going to be a little bit of a pain. <coughs> it is what it is. There we go, that lines up nicely with our centre mark, so that's a good start. right -o. so that's all our nuts welded in place, and that's a nice fit now onto the end of the gearbox. So what I'll do now is I'll remove that and show you what we've got. Okay, so there we have it, that's our... Uh, uh, adapter plate template done so we don't no longer need this central hole to keep it perfectly lined up with the center so the next step is to cut this center out a bit
Okay, so that's that cut out and cleaned up and the sharper edges just tidied up. Next thing I'm gonna do is drill out these 10 mil bolts and then offer this back up to the block to see if there's any more trimming needed. So drill those out next. Lovely. And that's done to health and safety full standards. Happy days. Let's try that on the block and see what we got. Right here then. Let's see where that brings us. So these should all line up nicely now. Hopefully, if they don't, something gone horribly wrong. But it should be. Ah, now we need to uh, cut the a bit out of here to avoid our um, the crank sensor there. So there to there and get the nice chunk out of that. It's missing everything else which is important so that's good. Right I'll cut that out and then we'll try it again. So I've got that relief cut out there. So let's see how that looks again now. Lovely. Okay, so we've got everything lining up beautifully for the forward side of things. And we know this lines up on the master box. So that's as far as we need to go for the minute. Super. So that's uh, the end of this episode. So that's sort of a part one to this. I don't know how this is going to pan out. I've got to be honest with you. I'm not trying to put a Mark 1 MX-5 gearbox onto a ZTEC engine or ST170 engine before. I've done it with an RX-8 box and I used a purpose-built um, adapter plate which I had from a chap who doesn't live a million miles away from here as it happens and he sells them on eBay and they're very good quality um, but I want to try this box. Uh, I know Retro Ford used the later MX-5 gearbox, the R7 box I think they refer to that, that is. That's from the Mark II generation on I believe but don't quote me on that. But I know this Mark I box it's very nice because I've got a Mark 1 MX-5, as you know, and it's got the same gearbox in it, and it's a lovely, lovely feel to it. It's a very nice gearbox. So if I can make it fit better. If there's a good reason why Retro 4 don't use this one, and there probably is, and I just don't know what it is, and I haven't come across it yet. And if you know what that is, let me know, because I might be utterly wasting my time here, but I'm going to I'm gonna soldier on nonetheless. So there's our basic jig made. So the next plan is to clamp this down onto some thicker steel, 6 or 10 mil, depending on throw out some what I've you, but I've yet to work all that out as well. And then we can, once this is clamped down, I can drill through these to be in the right area, bolt that down, then possibly even use this as a plasma guide to, so I can cut out the, the, the thicker steel. So watch your space on that. <clears throat> My intention then is to use, these are just, um, M8 ones at the moment, so I'm going to get some M10 and M12 countersunk bolts, bolts I guess, some M, um, 10.9 spec as well, so they're nice and strong. Once this is bolted to the block and countersunk into the into the material, that will then be flush and the same coming from the other side. I'll have countersunk bolts sticking out for the gearbox to mate up to and they'll be flush also, so everything will hopefully should mate up together. Like I said, that's the plan. It's a bit of a, a test in progress, work in progress. And if you know better than I do, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope I give you some ideas on how to make a, an adapter plate. If you plan on putting gearboxes to engines that don't belong to each other, it gives you an idea where to get started with it. Thanks again. See you on the next one.